All right, so here we go again. Here it is, part two, part two of the oldest question that anyone has ever asked on the planet, uh, which is Mac or PC for programming. Uh, it's an age-old question. It's been listened. It's been asked since the dawn of time. We did this exercise in 2019, uh, which is actually like the first video I ever posted on this channel whenever I got serious about it. However, this is the, the 2020 or the 2021 edition, um, so a lot of things happened in 2020, and we're going to follow it up. And so this is going to be a yearly thing to where we compare them, looking back at the year ahead of us, which is better for programming, Mac or PC. But before we get into the video, here's a word from our sponsor. I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Havoc Shield, who offers small business cybersecurity from plan to proof. And is it time to get serious about your small business cybersecurity? Havoc Shield's standard plan includes penetration testing, endpoint security, dark web monitoring, and InfoSec policy templates. So go ahead and check out Havoc Shield. Their information is in the description below. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So our pros, for example, for the Mac um, in 2019 were that it was elegant, that it had longevity, that you could develop iOS apps, it was based on Unix, and it had a native terminal, right? So many of these pros still exist, and, they, and there are some new pros, right? So the M1 chip, it has made the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini uh, practically all the same. They are now cheaper to purchase. Um, it's, you know, this is, if you want to get into the Mac uh, ecosystem on either a laptop or a desktop, this is the cheapest time to do it. This is the cheapest I've ever seen them in a long time uh, for the performance that you get. And so they are great for developing iOS apps and for doing content creation using Apple's uh, software. And so if you're an iOS developer, you know this is your only choice. Uh, if you develop iOS apps, then you've got to use the uh, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, whatever, you know, something from Apple. And it's made even quicker now that the new M1 chips are out. Uh, we've seen that on the videos that we've done here on the channel, just how quick uh, you can actually do the development. You can do web development as well on these M1 chips. However, some things don't work. Uh, features have been are being added all the time, but your mileage is going to vary, right? And so let's take a look at the cons of the Mac. So they're expensive for the Intel version. So if you want to have native x86, um, you know, and by x86 I mean something like Intel, uh, for that architecture you do have to, to spend more to get the MacBook Pro, Air Pro or Mac Mini, uh, you know, the iMac, whatever. It is more expensive. And so I think it's like $17.99 for a MacBook Pro uh, to start out with an Intel CPU so that you can get that. And um, so it is expensive. The M1 chip doesn't have massive native support right now. Uh, you do get like stuff with the Rosetta uh, emulator and things like that. So, uh, you know, new native apps are coming out all the time. We're going to look at one, which is Adobe Premiere Pro that's in beta currently. Uh, boot camp is terrible, and it always will be. Uh, you can't really do boot camp anymore. Uh, when you could though, it was okay like in 2012, but now it doesn't really work that well. You know, they're not really for gaming. You know, if you want to do gaming, you're not going to go out and buy a Mac. You'd be better off, for example, buying a PC or something, depending on what kind of gaming it is. You can play games on a Mac, like World of Warcraft, League of Legends, things of that nature. Uh, and then the, the UI is unfamiliar for some. And so Windows has such a huge, a huge market share of the market. Uh, most people, you know, or used to be, aren't as familiar with the Mac UI. There are people that we hire at my job that they refuse to use a Mac. We're a Mac shop, though. And so I interview people, and they're like, no, I'll never use a Mac. You can't make me. I won't do it. And, yeah, sometimes we just don't go with those folks. You have to be able to, to learn a little bit. And so <clears throat> the, the UI is still unfamiliar for some. And so the pros for the Windows machine was that it was less expensive, or they were, and they're familiar, the UI is familiar. You have native software that, you know, pretty much everything's going to run on Windows unless it's made specifically for Linux or 
uh, you know, iOS or OS X, right? So you can do your gaming as well. All gaming, all pretty much every game ever is available on Windows, and so that's kind of the platform of choice if you want to do PC gaming. And also uh, WSL or Windows Sub Linux, which is really cool. It's a great thing on Linux. Um, I mean, not Linux, but Windows that you can you can, you can use Ubuntu, uh, you know, as a Sub Linux uh, in Windows. And so some of the cons, you know, Windows machines, they aren't always as elegant. They look, you know, gamery or they look cheap. You know, there, some of them are just really plasticky because they are cheap. Some of them look, you know, super gamery uh, with like flash and RGB and vents everywhere and they're loud. So they're not always as elegant. You can't develop iOS apps. Um, there are some non-premium machines like I was just mentioning and there's no native terminal. And I'm putting that in air quotes, but you do have like PowerShell and WSL, Command Prompt, Bash, stuff like that. So you do have that, so those are some of the cons, right? So 2020 really changed things as far as uh, it goes for development. Because of 2020, uh, before 2020, you know, everyone on the last video was like, you know, Mac for X and Windows for Y. And, you know, a couple people mentioned Linux, but a lot of people, it was like, I use Windows because of this, I use Mac because of that. Um, which let me tell you though, right now, Linux is looking like a great option. And so, you know, in all reality, both of these machines or these environments are viable unless you do iOS applications. And then you have to have a Mac. There's just no way around it unless you run a virtual machine in Linux, and, which you can do. Um, you can run a virtual machine. Of course, you can create a Hackintosh. Um, but have to have that, like that native, you know, that really native support, you do have to buy a Mac. And in the future, we're going to see to where um, Macs are going to require Apple Silicon. Uh, is is my, my prediction that within the next five years, the Hackintoshes will be a thing of the past unless there are some ARM chips that can kind of spoof it. Um, but... You know, if you do iOS development or anything like that, you do have to have a Mac. And so Windows really is looking like the real winner this time around, you know, because you can do virtualization, which you can't do on your Mac M1 right now. Um, you can do WSL, Bash, you know, et cetera, on your VMs. Uh, Docker, you know, if you develop Android applications right now, Android Studio virtualization doesn't work on your M1 Mac, so you do need Windows to do that. Or an older Intel-based um, Mac, you know, Docker doesn't work currently on the M1, so you're gonna want Windows or an Intel-based Mac. Uh, Kubernetes, Node, etc. All this stuff isn't available on the M1 Macs currently. Node works, but it's kind of iffy. Um, so Windows, in my opinion, is looking like the best option right now if you want just this native support with some great features. And, you know, Microsoft is really working on it. And, of course, you know, all their partners and stuff are working on the machines that they put out as well. And then, of course, you've got Linux. Linux is, if you can, if you can work with Linux, Linux is the real winner. It's the, the super winner is Linux. Linux wins this year's battle. And the reason for that is because you can do VMs of both Windows and Mac. You've got native terminal. You've open source out the wazoo. Linux. Uh, however, you know, Linux isn't as familiar to everyone. And so if you're not familiar with Linux, then I'm going to go with Windows. However, if you are familiar with Linux, listen, Linux is, right now is the best Linux has ever been. If you want to dive into Linux, now is the time. You can do VMs for Windows and uh, OS X. You, you can work on your pass-through with your GPUs. You're going to want to use AMD. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do in Linux right now. It's the best time to get into Linux. It's looking like a great option for developers uh, of all calibers and all sources, whether it's iOS, uh, Windows, Linux, whatever d development you want to do. It's looking great. Linux is looking great right now. And so, anywho, anyways, here's to 2021, uh, where we hope that you can finally use the Mac uh, M1s to do more than just iOS development, that you'll actually be able to this year. You know, be able to use Kubernetes and Docker and virtualization and stuff like that on the M1 Macs. Um, and hopefully you know that you hipster devs 
uh, learn some system admins so that you can use Linux. Uh, that's the real hope for this year. And so have a great year, everyone. Let me know what device you use to, for development. Let me know what device you plan to use to, for development. If you're like looking at Linux, if you're looking at the M1 Max or Intel-based Macs for your Windows, uh, or if, if you just go with the flow, you just go with whatever is best for your needs at the moment. Uh, just let me know. I, I love ha I love hearing what you all have to say. I love our conversations that we have. I want to hear what it is that you all have to say this year and going into 2021 what it is, what machines that you are going to use. And so we're going to keep this year going, uh, rolling all year long, you know, with some great content. So go ahead and subscribe. Just We're going to work on a ton of videos this year. We're going to put out some great content for you all. Uh, we're going to be looking at, you know, all the stuff for programming like RAM, uh, we might look at AMD versus Intel for programming, just a lot of stuff. So go ahead and subscribe, hit the notifications, leave a like, definitely leave a comment and let me know what you all think. And y'all have a great year and of course, keep it real.